It is Goss here with you. Filling in for LeVac for now is Chris Sonorato, and we have a very special guest joining us in studio, a part of the Greenwich lacrosse team. Hayden, why don't you introduce yourself a bit and tell us a little bit about yourself before Chris and I start to badger you with questions. <laughs> uh, I'm Hayden Stalter. I'm a senior at Greenwich High School. Um, I play lacrosse and soccer there, and um, I'm actually headed to MIT next year for college. Where I'll also be playing lacrosse. Two truths and a lie. You just played with us, right? The lie was the end at the end. You're not going to MIT for real, are you? I am. <laughs> what? This is the type of athlete of the week we've set. Last week we had a kid going to Brown. Now we brought in an MIT guy. Was this a goal of yours along the way to end up at MIT? Uh, yeah, it actually was. Um, I went to Tufts for uh, like a prospect camp last summer, and while we were there, we uh, went over and visited MIT, and I actually met with the assistant coach. Got to talk to him, and then from there on, I knew like that was the spot I wanted to go. So, uh, yep. Awesome, man. 4.0 average, all that. Tell us about your season so far for Greenwich Lacrosse. How come you guys have been so successful so far? Um, so, this year we are, I think, 16 and 1. Is that right? And uh, we lost to Queensberry, which is a um, big rivalry. We played them last year, lost by one, and then this year it was a little bit worse, but I uh, wish we got to play them more. And, uh, we also, um, I think, in the last four years, Dan was telling me that uh, we've only lost one game in league play at home, which is pretty cool. So, And you guys are going to play for the title in yeah, we, Class D, the first ever year of Class D. Yep. Um, I think there's only, there's only six teams in Class D Section 2, so we only had to play one game to get to the game tomorrow, but... Uh, should be good tomorrow. Guys, we know we know we're smart because everybody always tells you if you're the smartest guy in the room, you need to find a new room. You and I are not the smartest guys in this room currently with Hayden here. Uh, Hayden, where did the academic drive come from for you? Obviously, you're a terrific athlete and you're going to play at the collegiate level. But you could go play college lacrosse just based on your athletics. Mm-hmm. But obviously, academics are important to you as yep. well. When, Where was that instilled in you? Um, so really, I've loved math and science since I was young. I love problem solving. And uh, just just throughout high school, like getting my work done, getting a grades has been uh, just one of my goals. I, I strive to do well in the classroom. And uh, mo- more recently, I've been taking classes like AP Calc and AP Physics and I absolutely love them. I love my teacher. I love the problems we do. And uh, it's made me kind of take the path of uh, mechanical engineering, which is what I'm going to. I'm planning to major in next year, which that could change. I know a lot of people say, I'm going to do this. And then they get there and they're like, well, maybe I'm going to do something else. But uh, I really like that aspect of school. So. Aiden Stallner joining us here. Cat's Eye Pest Control Athlete of the Week. Remember, if you have a local athlete you want to nominate, it's as simple as this. Head on to 1045theteam.com. Type in why you think this athlete should win the award. Give us a little description, and you might hear your athlete either on a Monday or Tuesday getting an opportunity to get a little interview here, but this time Chris and myself, LeVac also down the line, and spotlighting the local things going on thanks to Cat's Eye Pest Control. Hayden, how would you describe your style of play on the lacrosse field? Um... Let's see. Uh, I'm pretty patient, I think. We have a patient offense, so we like to get the ball around a lot and uh, only go for good looks. So in our offense, we'll have somebody dodge, and usually it's dodge to pass. You want to dodge, you want to draw another guy and move the ball. It's not usually just like a one and done. You dodged and and shoot. So uh, I'd say patient, and um, I like to go for assists. I like to draw the double and move the ball. Um, I wouldn't say flashy, but <laughs> a little LeBron Jamesy. It sounds like yeah. the teammates involved, avoiding the double teams, things like that. <laughs> Hayden, I don't want you to go too far, but I want to bring in your coach right now. He's not from Hobart, like another one of your coaches. But yeah. if you don't mind, Jeez. what step step to the mic a little bit, coach, and let's have you describe, introduce yourself, and describe how you would see Hayden out on the lacrosse field. I'm my name is Dan Spigner. I'm uh, assistant coach uh, with his father, Mike Stalter, and then uh, Bob Sipperly out of uh, he went to Hobart, three time national champion. Notice Hobart. who won this award, by the way. I, yeah. I, had, I had no I influence. You'd love that. I know I would. And Corey and Greenwich had no voting, I think, either one of our famous <laughs> callers on Levac and Goss. But so, how, how would you describe Hayden out there? Uh, I mean, he's, he's basically the field general out there. I mean, we, you know, we've been working at this for. 
you know, five, six years. Hayden's been on the varsity team for five years, and he, he's always setting an example. He's businesslike. He gets he gets out there and gets the work done and uh, maintains such a professional uh, aspect of the team that it, it just it, it it's exudes. It just get, goes into – it's infectious. It, you know, all the other players pick up on it, and, I mean, he's, he's a leader. He makes them tick. You know, if he starts out slow, the team starts out slow. If they start out great – He's, he's, he's the man that does it. So, I mean, you can't say enough about him. I mean, obviously, you got a 4.0 and go to MIT. I mean, <laughs> there's a reason he's in this room, That's right? right? Yeah. Hayden, I want to get some real talk out of you, though, real quick, because I asked Paul Carcaterra this, uh, who I'm sure you are yep. a, an ESPN analyst for college lacrosse. I asked him this a week ago on the air because I never played lacrosse gr- growing up in New Jersey. And so I'm always amazed when a guy just kind of like crow hops into a shot from 20 yards out and they're able to bury it in a corner. How much of that is intentional and how much of that is, let me just wind up, fire away here as hard as I can and see if it gets into the cage. Yeah, so uh, we're always aiming for corners, really. Um, Coach says paint the pipe. So it's just uh, you want to go like off stick side and uh, aim for that pipe. I think... When people really nail corners, it's got to be – there's a little bit of luck in it. Yeah. Like, uh, you know, you'll you'll shoot a couple shots in a game. You're not hitting that corner every single time. And uh, also, Coach likes to say, like, don't just aim for the corner because you're going to miss. You want to aim for, for, like, more of the goal. So, I don't know. It's I like think that aim small, miss small kind of That's right. Of, so, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I'm, I know I'm going to get you in trouble maybe with your coach with this question, but All I right. wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't. Are you guys thinking about how far you could go in states? Are you guys thinking about, are you guys class D's a little fresh, a little new? Coach just gave me the death player, but that's fine. <laughs> what are you thinking about? If you guys can get by this matchup again in sectionals, do you guys think you got a chance yeah. in states? Well, um, I know our coach likes to say you shouldn't think about anything but the game coming up. So I try not to. But uh, we just there was just an upset. Um, Westlake beat Bronxville. Which is Bronxville's a team that when we went to regionals in my ninth grade season, they they whooped us, and they always got the D1 kids and stuff like that. But they just uh, they lost 20 to 12 to Westlake, so I think that that could be in our favor. Uh, we've never played Westlake, we've never actually been exposed to them, so that's another good thing coming in at a new team. Like uh, you don't really know what to expect. I kind of like that. I don't like being nervous. Like okay, we've we know what Bronxville has, so. Uh, I think that if there was a year to do it, this would be the year. Spoken pretty well there for yeah. MIT. Stayed away from the headlines, did what he could there. But you know what I heard? Windows open. That's right. Yeah. That's very true. Ithaca, Hobart, MIT. Hayden, thank you for helping us He's got us today. lacrosse flow, too, going. I'm always serious, complimentary of, of good hair. I can't yeah. wait to cut it, though. Uh, <laughs> all right. What? So that's well, playoff hair? It is. All right. I started growing it out uh, in soccer season. I haven't cut it once. Wow. Oh. It gets annoying in the morning. <laughs> Chris is an expert on hair, by the way. This man has big the fan best. of hair. I can the tell. best. I'm a big fan. Yeah. Hey, appreciate it. You're the Cat's Eye Pest Control Anthem. Congrats, of the week. man. We're wishing you. you the best of luck throughout the rest of your season. I'm rooting for you because of the Hobart connection. Chris is rooting for you because you know we want to see some winning lacrosse teams here in section two. You got that two, right, man. man. Maybe we'll be talking about you guys more and more every section Tuesday. Best of luck and Thank good luck you. to Greenwich. Thank you.